Hello all and welcome to a brand new Paris Pickups. Now we're back here again, back in my flat, uh, and we're going to have a look at some of my recent pickups. So let's take a little gander, shall we? Okay, so first up, something rather special. This is the Samurai Showdown Collector's Edition. We've got a full unboxing of this on the channel, so you can check that out if you're interested. But this is from Picks and Love, and uh, yeah, it's got a little art book uh, in there and uh, soundtrack on two CDs and art cards and also the game but the game is in my cupboard here but uh, that's uh, that's it and, and what you get is also the cool little uh, spacer there because when you have the game in so we put all that back in there because the PS4 game is slightly smaller it's a little spacer at the top but that is a really heavy duty box, really cool package from, uh, let's close it, from, lim uh, it's not limited run, that, they did the last one of these uh, Neo Geo uh, boxes, but um, this is from Picks and Love. So put that to one side for a moment, and Taurus Trophy, you may have already seen it at the corner of your eye, it's another game I picked up recently, three pounds delivered. I didn't know about this game until fairly recently, but it's from Polyphony, who did obviously, who continue to do Gran Turismo. And this is their motorcycle game. Gran Turismo on bikes. The real riding simulator for the makers of Gran Turismo comes a new perspective on racing. Uh, I've played this very briefly. I, it's okay, it's okay. I wasn't blown away, first of all. I always find um, motorcycle games rather tricky, but for three pounds, I'm happy to have it and I will give it more of a, more of a go. Uh, also, I haven't played either of these yet, but Virtua Fighter 10th Anniversary, so this is a port of Virtua Fighter for the PS2. It came in several different um, covers. Uh, this is obviously the Jackie cover, there's an Akira cover as well. I'm not sure if there are other ones, but there could very well be. But uh, I remember this because uh, back when I used to work in games retail, you could get a demo well, not a demo version of this, but it was like a promo copy of this game in a thin CD case. And I think there was something to do with Virtua Fighter 5 at the time, or 4 even. Maybe even 4. And you could uh, get them when you uh, pre-ordered that, I think, or bought it. I can't remember. But this is the Japanese uh, release. I think it was a retail release by the looks of the... Uh... Ah, no! I don't know. It's not got a barcode, so... I'm not sure. I'm not sure in that case. It might also be a promotional Okay, If you know, let me know. And here. Now, I can't remember what this is called, but I do know uh, that Spunko, uh, of Ren Stimpy fame, worked on this game. <laughs> and this game worked with a USB microphone for PS2. And I'm pretty sure what you could do with it was direct your own cartoons. And that sounds incredibly interesting to me. I could be wrong. I, I, it may just be um, a game where you interact with it using the microphone. I can see we have a Western stage, a horror stage. I feel like it's something to do with filmmaking and um, doing the voiceovers. So as we have a, a clipboard there, a clapperboard or whatever it's called. It's not a clipboard, is it? And uh, I doubt the manual is going to give me much of an insight into the game. But here is an illustration from Spumco. So a very Spumco illustration there, and throughout the um, manual you've got these uh, characters. That's interesting, that's, so that's, that's the microphone. I haven't got the microphone, but yeah, no, being a fan of Ren Stimpy and Spumco in general, I decided to pick this up. Not, not a particularly expensive game, but a bit of an interesting one, I think. So I have two new CDI pickups this time. First of all, Zenith. Um, yeah, I've been really excited about playing this. It's one of those CDI games which they considered one of the better ones. It's usually quite expensive, but I got this for a much more affordable price. I think about 18 pounds, which, yeah, it's a lot better than the prices I've been looking at. And again, cheaper than usual, uh, Christmas Country, 25 pounds, still quite a lot of money really for a CDI game. But again, this is considered one of the best games on the CDI. It's a 2D platformer. Uh, and on the back there, you can see it says, when it focuses, 
Ho, 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 what a game. Uh, what more do you need to know? Although here is, I think, the Dutch uh, guidance symbol. Child's guidance, general viewing, but some scenes may be unsuitable for older parents. Oh, it's a, it's a joke. Do you like that? It's got a little clever little joke on the back there. Christmas Country. And Zenith, I didn't say before, is a puzzle game. Well, puzzle action game. Arcade style game. There's no screenshots on the back. I imagine at the time, if you're buying this game, it would be relatively difficult to know what it was, what you did in it. But you view it from this top-down perspective. There's a ball that bounces up and down. Uh, I'll show you more in a moment. So we're playing Zenith on the CDI. Very excited about this. It's a game I've wanted for quite some time. I've heard it's one of the best CDI games. And. Let's see what this is all about. Zenith. For the Philips CDI. I'm on the edge of my chair, literally. Has it been worth the wait? So the ball bounces. You can move the ball. You have control over the ball. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, it's slightly... Uh, Let's see, it's like sick. Okay, but I think that's a good thing. So as you can see, a fairly unique game. Bounce the ball onto these um, oh, coloured buttons. I don't know if you get like uh, high scores for combos or anything. Presume, what's the these bees? What do they do? B. Make a different noise when you land on them. Extra fuel, we obviously need fuel, what do you see? Those bits don't do anything. So do we want to hit these? Let me just see. They're red, so... No, no, they actually give you points. Because red sometimes means bad. No points, so... Oh, no, I've got points. Okay, so don't... Go in, look at the shadow, I guess, because that's where you're going to land. Flipping heck. Now that's acid too. Right then, I'm Zenith. What do you think? I mean, it's pretty unique, isn't it? So here we have Christmas Country which is another CDI game I've been after for a very long time. I heard fantastic things about this game. It's been one of the, the best games on CDI, if not the best game. Here it is. You got a run button, you got a jump button. You've got no music, <laughs> which is slightly disappointing. Uh, we can go in here, press up. You can see Santa, what, he, what did he say? What did Santa say? I miss that. Oh, we don't know. We don't know what he said. He said something. We can jump on him and get these presents. I think he has something about saving children, some sort of list. Okay, it feels like a video game, which is a great start for a CDI game. It feels like a Mario type thing than that you can run as well as a run button. You jump on enemies, you collect stars and presents. Yeah, it's fairly easy to play. Uh, I think the lack of music is somewhat disappointing. It feels a bit lazy not to have music. Some sort of music would just make this whole game a lot better. Uh, but you know, in terms of gameplay, this plays really well. Um, you can do a running jump there. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, yeah, this this game is about yeah you know, about twenty five quid, twenty twenty five quid on CDI. Uh, that's quite a lot uh, for an older game, especially a CDI game. But it was a much later release. I think if I'd have uh, got this at the time, I would have been very impressed with it, but still disappointed that there is no music. don't know what I'm meant to do here. 
we can't get through there. Let's just. Uh, oh. I don't know what the letters mean. I, th I guess they're important. Uh, I like the, the checkpoints, so you don't start off at the beginning of a level. That's nice. Ooh, that seems a bit twitchy there. The controls. Let's try again. Oh, we're going to run out of lives at this rate. But we're going to try one more time. Oh, oh well. And that's it. Uh, <laughs> Christmas country. I'll certainly play it again, of course, try and get a bit further. As far as CDI platformers go, it's no The Apprentice, uh, unfortunately. Maybe not even quite Lucky Luke. Uh, but it attempts to do something more akin to Super Mario. You can shoot, you can run and shoot, that's great, okay. Uh, which, you know, is uh, admirable. So, a lovely um, menu screen. Christmas country. So we're going to bring this episode to a close today by talking about two games I've been playing recently on live streams. The first of those games is A Tale of Paper by Open House Studios and the second game that would be Yes Tomorrow by Bitmap Galaxy. So both these games are actually quite similar. We'll take a look at uh, A Tale of Paper first, which uh, very striking visually, I thought. Uh, it's a puzzle platformer game uh, taxes your brain a little bit, of course we like a bit of that, but not too much, you know, it, it's fairly straightforward, which is what I like about it. It does have a sort of Metroidvania-like quality, so in that sense that to progress in the levels you need to learn a skill. You may see something that you can't interact with until you found the correct uh, skill to get past that, um, which is very cool, and it works really well in this game. It's got fantastic music, great atmosphere and a really interesting uh, concept that your uh, paper character can transform into other origami characters, for example, uh, to get past one of the early parts of the game you use, uh, you change it to a frog, an origami frog, to sort of access uh, certain uh, platforms and such. So I'd really recommend uh, a tale of paper, I think it's really good, uh, so well worth checking out. And the second game, uh, is Yes Tomorrow, and Yes Tomorrow is really something, I think. Uh, it's quite striking visually at first, uh, reminding me of something like uh, Fez, for instance. Uh, animation, silky smooth, uh, gets into the gameplay rather quickly. There's a little bit of dialogue and story set up, but, you know, it's not something you necessarily want to skip and it doesn't hang around for too long, because I'm always one of those impatient gamers who's trying to rush to the, uh, the gameplay. But the gameplay is incredibly solid. Again, it's a puzzle platformer, so you know you have to do a fair bit amount of platforming, uh, integrating a, a roll attack, which also gives you a little bit more momentum, so you can jump across, uh, you know, bigger, bigger areas. Um, but yeah, how the puzzle elements play into the platforming is really well done, and. Yeah, you do have to, again, you, you use your noodle a little bit to get through some of the puzzles, but they're not too challenging, I didn't find, in this kind of the early hour, first hour of the game. I don't know how long the game is. I have heard it is, is quite a, a longer one, so... Plenty of gameplay there to keep you occupied, but, you know, the way your character controls in Yes Tomorrow is it, very tight. It's, it's really nicely done, and, as I say, the whole atmosphere in Yes Tomorrow is really fantastic with great solid uh, gameplay to back it up. So yeah, that brings me to the end of this episode of Tom's Gaming World. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch it, really do appreciate it. If you like this kind of content, please do subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and we'll see you again for an episode of Tom's Gaming World. It is goodbye and game on.